What's up YouTube? Today I have the pleasure of reviewing this 2021 Honda Ridgeline with beautiful downtown Fredericksburg in the backdrop. But with that said, let's get into the video. With the 2021 makeover, it gives the Ridgeline that tough truck appearance that Ridgeline enthusiasts and prospective buyers alike have been longing for for years. It kind of resembles that of the first generation Ridgeline, but it's got the new updated LED headlamps and a nice new 2021 revamped design that differs it from the 2019 and below. For 2021, Honda took design cues from Ram and other truck brands to make this truck look more muscular than it did in previous years. With the boxier hood and the bigger front grille, I think that it all comes together really well with this nice muscular body line on the front hood and it follows through to the rest of the vehicle very well. With the boxier front end and that Ram-like hood, that design language follows through to the rear with those dual exhaust tips to make this look less like an SUV and more like a truck. For 2021, you can get the Ridgeline in four trim levels. There's Sport, RTL, RTLE, and Black Edition like we have here. In my opinion, I think the Black Edition looks the best. Uh, it just gives you that blacked out look, blacked out mirrors, blacked out wheels. But I think the wheels that come with the HPD package, you can actually order them at a Honda dealership. They're the 18 inch HPD wheels. And I think those wheels, if you wanna customize your Ridgeline, you can get the white Black Edition with the 18 inch HPD wheels. And I think this would look perfect. As before mentioned, new for 2021 is the HPD package, which is available on all trim levels for an upcharge of 2,800 bucks. The HPD package includes 18 inch HPD wheels, which you can get either in black or bronze. You also get a different front grille, fender flares, beefier wheels and tires, an HPD emblem, and you also get the HPD sticker package, which goes towards the rear of the truck. In describing the HPD package, it's kind of like the Toyota Tacoma's TRD package, which you get the fender flares, you get the beefier wheels and tires and stuff like that. So think of the Ridgeline HPD package, kind of like the Toyota Tacoma TRD package. I think if you're looking for more of a rugged Ridgeline, then you would definitely want to go with the HPD package. But if you're asking for my opinion, the Ridgeline trim that I would get, I would definitely get the black edition with those HPD black wheels. Moving from looks to powertrain, for 2021, all-wheel drive is now standard on the Ridgeline, whereas in previous years, two-wheel drive was standard, and you can get all-wheel drive for an upcharge. Well, now that all-wheel drive is standard, Honda has raised the MSRP by a couple thousand dollars. In my opinion, I think it's a good move, but I know I made a comment on the Honda Ridgeline forums that uh, I think all-wheel drive being standard is now an awesome thing, whatever, but one of the Florida guys on there commented and said that he doesn't think that Honda should have done that, blah, blah, blah. Two-wheel drive is fine for the boys down in Florida, but I think if you're on a slippery boat ramp, you definitely want all-wheel drive, but that's just my opinion. To pull your boat out of the water, you got a 3.5 liter V6 motor that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. That motor can propel this Ridgeline from zero to 60 in 7.2 seconds, which is definitely not slow by any means. Yeah, now in today's world, you got the Ram T-Rex that makes 702 horsepower, which is definitely crazy. Uh, so, you know, maybe if you're used to a V8 or something like that, this probably won't feel the fastest to you. However, if you are coming from like a first generation Ridgeline, which we have right there, uh, this is definitely faster than that. You also have that nine speed automatic transmission, which is definitely a lot quicker than the old six speed. If you're looking for fuel economy and quick shifts, definitely take a look at the new 2021 Ridgeline. Also, the Ridgeline uses a fully independent suspension setup, which gives it an SUV-like ride in a pickup truck. Its competitors are still stuck in the stone age using solid axle setups and stuff like that, which give their trucks a whole lot bumpier of a ride than the Ridgeline. So if I had one word of advice to Chevy, Ford, and Nissan, it'd be to step your game up if you want to ride like the Ridgeline. Segwaying from suspension, the Ridgeline boasts the highest payload capacity in its class at 1,583 pounds. However, towing capacity remains the same at 5,000 pounds which really is more than enough for the mid-sized truck buyer. Uh, most of those people are never really gonna be towing. And if they are towing, they're definitely gonna be pulling under 5,000 pounds. Now, other pickup trucks in the class can pull 7,000 to 7,500 pounds. However, if you're gonna be pulling about that much weight, I'd look into stepping up to like a 1500 truck, like an F-150, Silverado 1500, or a Ram. But for people who don't tow or don't tow that often and tow under 5,000 pounds, I would definitely give the Ridgeline a look. There are a couple cool features that the Ridgeline has towards the back of the truck. First being the tailgate opens this way. 
Another cool feature is that it has in-bed storage. So you can have this be a cooler or if you're going on a road trip and you don't want your belongings to get wet, you can put them in here. But for my family and the first generation Ridgeline, we use it for storage. Uh, if you need like a bike pump, towels, stuff like that, this is definitely a nice place to store your stuff instead of in the bed or in the cab. Uh, so that's definitely a nice feature that a lot of other trucks should really catch on to. But another cool feature that this Ridgeline does have is in-bed truck audio and it also has a outlet right here as well. And another thing that you might notice is that the bed is nice and lit up and that would definitely be very helpful at night. For the towing package on the Ridgeline, you have your nice hidden trailer hitch right here and it's also pre-wired for your trailer lighting right here as well. And like I mentioned up front, for 2021, the Ridgeline comes with a dual exhaust, which I think gives the rear end definitely a nice and sporty look. And I think the muscular front end with the nice sporty rear end of the back, it all ties together really nicely to make it look really good. And something I thought I'd add for those who are curious, the wheel and tire size is a 245 60 18. And I think that these 18 inch wheels really set the truck off really nicely. I know we've talked a good bit about the exterior and the performance. Now let's see what it's like on the interior. So. You have your key fob in your pocket. You can unlock or lock the door by pushing this button right here. The car's already unlocked. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing I notice is the uh, auto up down windows are only for the front, which is nice. You also have storage space right here for your phone or whatever you want to put in there and down there as well in your map pocket. Uh, moving in, first thing I notice is just how comfortable these seats are. I'm a big fan of this armrest. I've only driven this around a little bit. And just for that little bit that I have driven it, I've noticed that uh, this armrest is a huge help and I could definitely see myself doing a long road trip from where I am in Virginia down to Miami, Florida, which would be about a 13 hour trip. I could see myself doing that in this no problem. And this armrest right here definitely eases the pain on a long road trip. But uh, let's start her up and see what it's like. Seat moves forward. Looking at the dash, you have your speedometer up top in a nice digital format. I like that. You also have your analog RPM gauge on the left right here, fuel gauge down there, and coolant temperature right there. This car does have adaptive cruise control as well as lane keep assist. It also has collision mitigation, which is really nice. Uh, so this car is jam-packed with safety features. You obviously have blind spot monitoring and stuff like that. And for adaptive cruise control, this adjusts the length between you and the car in front of you. You can set your cruise control here. And uh, this is for lane keep assist right here. To go through the dash menu right there, you use these buttons right here. And as you can see, as I touch them, it's switching through the different menus. Uh, these are your audio controls right here. So you have your source. Uh, you have your volume up and down right here and you also have uh, you can switch between songs or stations Depending on what source you have going on that right there and down here You have your road departure mitigation on or off you have your collision mitigation right here cargo lights right here uh, This button is for your power outlet in the truck beds and you have your option between 400 watts or 150 watts. So that's pretty cool. You also have your parking sensors on or off right there and traction control right there. You obviously have your economy button right there as well. And unlike a lot of other trucks, you have a push button transmission, which I am actually, I do like this push button transmission. And uh, you see this button right here. This button goes in between your normal snow, mud and sand. So those are your different drive modes right there. Um, you do have heated seats, but one thing I definitely uh, am kind of surprised at is that this car does have heated seats, but it doesn't have cooled seats. Um, so if you're looking for cooled seats, then this might not be the truck for you. But I mean, you really don't need cooled seats half the time in a lot of manufacturers cars, the cooled seats don't even work. So I don't think that really is a big issue, but uh, some people might have an issue with that. So I'm just letting you know uh, that right there. This car does have a sunroof right here. Uh, I think it's a good size. So if you want to uh, crack the sunroof open just a little bit, you can do that. And you can also open the back window back there to get a nice vented fresh airflow going through the truck cabin like that. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a push button start vehicle, uh, like all new 2021 vehicles. But back to the steering wheel, this car does have a heated steering wheel, which your button is right there. It also has paddle shifters right there. Uh, I'm not sure about the response time on that but when we get into the driving review i will definitely uh be testing that out you know it's not the fastest thing in the world but really how many ridgeline owners are going to be using the paddle shifters anyway 
Um, this car also, which I'm a huge fan of, has a wireless charging pad right here. You also have your 12 volt outlet right there and you have a USB port right here for wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, you do not have any USB-C ports, which is not really a big deal. Like I said, climate controls right here, they're all push button, which I love. I'm definitely a big fan of push button rather than touch screen. But for 2021, they brought back the volume knob. I can't thank Honda enough for doing that. A lot of people are definitely gonna be really happy to have that volume knob back. But as you can see, maybe, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you have your home, your menu, your back button, and then day or night to adjust the brightness of the screen right there. So very easy to use infotainment system. Definitely doesn't take much getting used to, but yeah, you'll get used to it quick. It's touch screen. It's got a great response time. And for 2021, Honda upgraded the graphics for the infotainment system as well. And you have two cup holders right here. You also have this cool little storage area right here, which you slide this thing back and it reveals your storage area, which is really nice. You also have an auxiliary port right there, as well as another USB port right there. You also have a power outlet right there as well, which is awesome. To open up your gas tank, you push this button right here and the gas tank will pop open. So you push it, gas tank pops open. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the MSRP. The MSRP of this white black edition that we have here today is $46,805. And like I said, towards the beginning of the video, this car is the top of the line of all the ridge lines that you can get. You can also add the HPD package to the black edition for an extra I think it was $2,800, uh, but this is basically the highest end ridge line that you can get. Um, so obviously I think it starts at about $37,000 and you can get it up to forty-seven dollars or $50,000 uh, depending on the options that you have. But for $46,000, I think this is a very solid option for those of you looking for a mid-sized truck. Super comfortable, fuel efficient, quick enough and it tows 5,000 pounds with a 1,583 pound payload capacity. I mean, you really can't beat this truck. And I know I mentioned this as soon as I got in the car at first, but I wanna mention it again, just because I think it's something that's very important to a lot of people. And I just wanna say how comfortable these front seats are. And I love that it's got this armrest right here. I think these armrests are a huge asset, especially on a long road trip. And you also have that armrest on the passenger side seat as well. And one thing that's cool is that you can adjust the armrest to whatever uh, spot that you want it to be at so if you want it to be low you can do that if you want it to be a little bit higher you can do that and set it right there you want it to be even higher you can do that and set it right there which is great but let's get into the back seats and see how the back seat leg room is moving into the rear seat one thing that's really cool that um, I know my family has used plenty of times on our first generation Ridgeline is that you can fold these seats up, which makes it uh, a great little place, especially for my family is we have our dog that we bring with us a lot of places. So our dog sits right here, but also you have just under seat storage. So you can put whatever you need. There's about, if you put the seat back down, you have about a foot, foot and a half of uh, storage space that you can put followed by like five or six feet across. So you have uh, a foot tall by six feet long and whatever you wanna store under the seats, uh, this is definitely a great option for storage. Uh, but moving to the rear, you don't have automatic up down windows, but you do have a cup holder and a place to set your phone right in there or whatever you wanna put right there. Uh, let's step in. I'm sitting behind myself at about five foot nine uh, and I got plenty of leg room right here and plenty of headroom here as well. One thing I do like is you have this fold down armrest right here in the middle with two more cup holders here and you can put really whatever you want to uh, in that little storage space right there. But one thing I do like is that my family used to take long road trips in our first generation Ridgeline and uh, this second generation Ridgeline definitely does not disappoint in the comfort section in the front or the rear. I'm definitely very comfortable. And it seems like the seat cushion, whatever they used in the front is followed to the rear. They definitely didn't cut costs by making the rear seats uncomfortable at all. These rear seats are actually very comfortable. Um, and I do like that you have your armrest on the side here and you also have this pull down center armrest in the middle here if you don't have a fifth passenger. And I can even see myself sitting in the back seat for a 13 hour road trip from Virginia to Miami or something like that. Uh, but back here you have your two vents here. It is a dual zone climate control. So the back seat passengers are really at the mercy of the driver and whatever the driver wants to set the uh, interior temperature to. And something that is cool right here is that you do have two USB ports right here. So you have your passenger here and your passenger here can both charge their phones at the same time, which is great. 
Um, you have your map pockets right here to put whatever you want to right here. You have a decent amount of storage space in there too. Uh, I know a lot of car manufacturers have these map pockets, but there's really not that much wiggle room. That is not the case here. There's a good amount of wiggle room right there. Um, but yeah, these seats are very comfortable. The doorway is a good size. And yeah, I could definitely see myself doing a long road trip back here. But I think that's enough of me talking about the exterior, the performance and the interior. Now let's see what this thing's like to drive. And now on to my favorite part of the video. And I think the part of the video where the ridge line is gonna shine the most and that would be the way that it drives. So pulling out of this little park that we got here, we're gonna take a little left. And just under normal acceleration, I mean, it accelerates no problem. Uh, it definitely doesn't feel sluggish whatsoever. I mean, that was just zero to 35, uh, just under normal acceleration. And I mean, it does great. It definitely doesn't lack pow any power. I mean, we're getting great gas mileage. The uh, average fuel says we're getting about 20 ish miles per gallon which is fantastic for a truck like this and it's only going to get better the more that you drive it and the more that the car gets used to uh somebody who's driving it obviously if you're lead footing it it's not going to get good gas mileage it's a v6 after all but it rides very quiet we're going about 40 miles an hour right here uh going over a couple bumps and you don't even really feel the bumps uh and if you were in something like a Colorado or a Ranger. I know I've ridden in a Colorado before and I was definitely not a fan of the way that it drove. And also just the way that it felt on the interior in the Colorado was definitely lackluster as something compared to this. This feels a lot more premium, just super comfortable. Um, and definitely no complaints about the way that it drives at all. Uh, switching lanes here. Uh, you got your blind spot monitoring, which definitely helps out a lot. Um, this blind spot, there's not really that big of a blind spot. I mean, maybe that pillar back there is a little bit of a blind spot, but not really. But yeah, going 45 miles an hour now, very, very quiet. I'm not playing any radio, climate's not on. Uh, going over a bridge right now, very comfortable. Uh, no issues there whatsoever. Coming up to a stop right here, let's test the brakes. You do have to push the brakes down a little bit, uh, but it's definitely no issue uh, at all. Uh, definitely very good brakes, nothing to complain about right there. But uh, I'm gonna be doing a U-turn here, so we'll be checking the turning radius of this car. Definitely not bad at all. As I mentioned, when we were going over the interior, this car does have auto stop start. And out of all the auto stop start systems that I've used, it's definitely one of the better ones. It starts up immediately. Uh, definitely no lag when off the line. Um, would I use auto stop start? Probably not. I probably turn it off every time. But um, you know, that's just me. I'm not really a fan of the auto stop start and. I really don't know how much uh, fuel savings you get from the auto stop start, but I know definitely if you're in stuck in traffic and your AC or something like that, and your AC and stuff isn't on, uh, you'll definitely be getting better fuel economy. But uh, just like that, where you auto stop start clicked on and uh, it got going really right away. Uh, definitely no issues there. One thing I don't think I mentioned was the uh, sound system in this car. The sound system is actually pretty impressive. I know some people on the forums were complaining about the sound system in the 2021 not being the greatest, uh, but I haven't found that to be true. I thought it was actually really good. I listened to a, uh, a few rap songs and I listened to a few country songs and I was impressed with the way that it sounded. Um, so definitely no complaints there. Uh, the way that this car turns, there's definitely not that much body roll. I know like in the F-150s, you can't really compare this to an F-150, but in F-150s and trucks like that, there's a lot more body roll, but obviously this is a mid-size pickup truck, so there's not gonna be as much body roll. This doesn't really feel like that heavy of a truck, which is great, uh, especially if you're trying to daily drive this. Gas mileage, like I said, is great. Right now, this car is at a full tank and it says we have 380 mile range, which is great, that's fantastic. I'm not sure uh, how big the gas tank is, but I'll definitely pop that up right here. Uh, but regardless, if this is a 20 gallon tank and you get 380 miles per tank, definitely nothing to complain about. We're on this back road. Like I said, it's a little bit bumpy, but the ridge line just absorbs those bumps so well. Uh, nothing to complain about. Um, 
it being too bumpy or stuff like that. I, I know the Frontier, the Tacoma, and of those different types of trucks, I've driven them. They're definitely a little bit bumpy and a little bit jittery, if that makes sense, uh, when going over uneven bumps. But that's not the case with the Ridgeline. I know some Ridgeline enthusiasts might not like this line, but I personally think that it's a compliment to the Ridgeline. I think this Ridgeline rides like an Odyssey. I mean, it's so smooth and I mean it rides like an Odyssey you can pull 5,000 pounds you can put almost 1600 pounds in the bed I mean there's really there's really no reason to not get a Ridgeline if you're not pulling over 5,000 pounds maybe I'm biased or something but I really am a big fan of this truck but as always Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like what you saw and you're looking to get a Ridgeline, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment in the comment section down below if you've driven a 2021, if you're looking to buy a 2021, or if you have any questions about a 2021, hit me in the comment section down below. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by June of 2021, which is only a few months away but I really do think that we can get it done. And the more subscribers that I have, the more videos like this that I can make. So I really appreciate all the people who have subscribed and all the people who are going to subscribe maybe because they watched this video or something like that. But as always guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.